Scott, we're going to compare your swing to Grant Waite. Let's start with, uh, I like the fact that uh, you've got a nice straight line from the left arm and the shaft. Your hands are in front of the ball, which is very good because you, where, basically where your hands are is where the low point of your swing is. And you need that low point in front of the golf ball to, to help you hit down into the ball with an iron. I've drawn a line from your the center of your left ankle up to see how much of your weight is on your left side. In order to keep the low point of your swing in front of the ball, you need to keep your weight uh, emphasized a little bit more on the left side. It's, I've done the same thing with Grant Waite's uh, setup, and uh, y'all look fairly similar in terms of how much of your body is in front of that line. The only real difference I see here is that uh, Grant flares his left foot out just a little bit more uh, in the setup than you do. This facilitates a little better shift to the left side as you swing down through the ball and, and move more weight to your left side in the downswing. As we get to the three position, this is when the left arm is parallel to the ground. Um, I really like uh, how you've kept your left arm extended. You've, you've started to load your hands and cock the wrist up. Um, looks very similar to what uh, your upper body uh, looks very similar to Grant's uh, position and form. Um, if you look at the lower body, there's subtle differences. Grant has maintained more of his weight uh, on his left side as he's taken the club back. He wants to make it easy to keep that low point in front of the ball. He doesn't want to move his weight behind the ball because that moves the, the bottom of his circle behind the ball, which will cause some impact issues uh, when he gets back to the ball. It makes the swing a little bit more complicated if he does that. Um, he, you can see that his right leg, his knee, is a little inside the ankle. That there's a little bit that's like a bracing angle right here that helps him uh, load up and, and, and push off that back foot um, into the swing uh, you can see how this knee has moved to the right from where it was earlier um, Grant also has turned his back hip he's wrote he's released that hip to coil a little bit more than you um, you kind of slid to the right where Grant is not, he's turning to the right. That's the key difference in those two. As we get to the top of the back swing, we'll start with the hands and arms. Um, you kept your left arm extended. You have a fairly compact back swing. You don't take too big a back swing, which I like. The main difference between you and Grant is that he has fully loaded his hands. He has cocked the wrist. His, the shaft of his club is almost at a right angle to his arms. So he's loaded his hands completely. You've kind of done a partial load. You haven't fully cocked the wrist. Um, and therefore you have a partial load and therefore won't be able to unload as much energy uh, and club head speed as Grant with through the hands. This is probably due to either you're not understanding or not having experienced the feeling of a correct wrist break, or it could also be that the, the method that you grip the club makes it difficult to have a correct wrist break. And so we can look at the grip a little bit and also work on some drills to learn how to cock those wrists properly so that you can have more power with less effort. As we, your shoulder turn is certainly adequate, not as much as Grant, but certainly adequate. Um, and uh, once you learn to keep your weight on your left foot, uh, that shoulder turn will get a little bit better. Um, regarding uh, where your weight is, the most of your weight is closer to your back foot. So your low point has moved uh, back a little bit too far and you're going to have to work on keeping that weight on your left side. Grant is definitely on his left side. You can see that his back leg is angled. He's almost falling to the target here. Um, Grant turns his hips. He, he, he 
releases his hips and lets these hips turn and coil. That's what allows him to have a better shoulder turn than you. You're again, you're just kind of sliding, you're not really turning. As we get to the sixth position, this is right before impact. Uh, this is when the club shaft is parallel to the ground on the downswing. Um, you'll notice that Grant has retained that right angle. He has not released his hands yet. The angle that he had in his right arm and shaft at the top of his backswing, he still has that angle. He has not yet unfolded his wrist. He has not unhinged his wrist on, on, the, on the way down. That is not his first move. He waits till he's almost at the golf ball before he, he fires his hands into the shot. So the downswing for him starts with the ground up. Uh, the, the hands are last, not first. You can see how he's definitely shifted his weight to the left side. You can see how both legs are angled toward the target. This green line represents uh, the center of his left ankle and it passes right almost through the center of his belt buckle. He's really driven and most of his weight is on top of that left foot. His hands are in front of the back foot almost up to the golf ball at this point. Your legs are basically stationary, they're static, there's not a lot of lower body action in your golf swing. You try to generate most of your power with your upper body and your arms. And you'll have a lot more power with less effort if you let your lower body help swing that club. And with proper loading of the hands, um, you'll be able to hold that angle a little better and have more power with your wrist hinge. You can see how your hands are at this point or, or way behind the foot. So working on the correct uh, action in your hands, teaching your hands first will be important. Right now I'm seeing two fundamentals that you need to work on. One is proper loading of the hands and the, how to move your lower body through the golf swing. How to start with the, on the left, how to stay on the left, how to shift to the left during the swing. Here we are at impact and again it's basically the same form differences. Um, good fundamentals have a look to them, a form, and if the look isn't there then the fundamental isn't there. The pros, 85% of their weight will be on their left side at impact and uh, this is what it looks like. You'll see that the center of their body mass, their belt buckle will be right on top of that left foot when they're making contact. Their hands will be in front of the golf ball when they're hitting irons because they they want the low point of their swing to be in front of that golf ball. So once we learn how to move our weight more forward and be uh, have more of your body mass in, on top of this left foot at impact, the more consistently you'll strike the ball solid. Uh, right now you probably experience both fat and thin shots. A fat shot means you're hitting a little bit behind the golf ball uh, or you try to save that swing and, and pull up a little bit um, and you'll hit some shots thin. Um, you can, if you get your body on your left side, you'll be able to have consistent shots because you won't have to make compensations and it's the compensations that you make during your swing that cause the inconsistency. This is the F9 position. This is a post-impact position. Uh, this is when the right arm is parallel to the ground. Um, let's start with the hands. You'll notice that uh, Grant's hands have crisscrossed. His wrists are crossed. The white glove is underneath the right hand. His left hand is underneath the right hand. Your left hand is still sitting above it. You're doing what we call chicken winging. You're letting this left arm fall, uh, go up high. It's separating itself from the right elbow. Grant has his elbows close together as he gets through here. Both arms fully extended and, and close in, together and in front of his chest and you've kind of separated your arms on the follow-through. Uh, 
uh, as I talked about teaching your hands proper movement through the swing. Uh, in the backswing, it'll apply to the follow through as well. Once you learn how to load your hands properly, it'll be much easier for you to unload your hands properly. And, and what Grant is doing, he has correctly released his hands through the shot, and you'll learn how that feels and, and gives you a lot more snap and power. This circle here is the location of your right hip, and you can see how Grant's right hip is up to the green line. It's, it's up on top of his left foot so he's not just sliding he's turning also and pushing his belt buckle toward the target and you're still kind of hanging back a little bit as we get to the final finish you have many components of your finish that are uh, the classic pro finish you look very similar to Grant which particularly look at the upper body um, you have a tendency maybe to keep your head down a little too long. You can go ahead and turn that head and look at your target, look at the ball in flight as you approach the end position here. Um, the key difference is really more in the lower body. Um, the um, Grant has turned, he's on his back, he's on his front foot and his back foot is on the toe here and you're still kind of just a partial turn. But as you work on those fundamental pieces prior to this finish, the finish will start changing as well. So overall I would say your swing has many essential fundamentals. Uh, we need to work on how your hands act through the shot, how to load and unload the hands, um, and then most importantly is how to control the location of your low point of your swing by controlling where your weight is during the swing. We need to keep the weight on the left side at the beginning, keep it on the weight on the left side in the backswing, and shift to the left even more on the downswing.